Hey gang, welcome back to another video. So this week's project is something that's been on my someday list for when I had a 3D printer with a large enough build volume to print it all in one go. And thanks to this week's video sponsor, Bamboo Lab, today is that day. So let's get started on building this RA7 Death Star droid head. I kicked off the project by importing the file into Bamboo Studio and moved it around until I found an orientation that would allow me to print it in one go. Which, if you know this droid, you know that's a big ask. But much to my surprise, I was able to find a position that worked, used minimal supports, and so I sent it off to the H2D to get printing. The H2D does more than just 3D printing. It can also laser cut materials like acrylic, and also has the ability to cut vinyl decals. I won't be doing either of those tasks for this project, but it's nice to know that it could should I need it. And after one day, 10 hours and 55 minutes, I had my droid head. This print is really clean considering I printed it at a taller layer height. Now I just need to remove the supports and then I can get to smoothing out the print. There's a spot that needs a little extra attention because I forgot to turn on the variable layer height setting in Bamboo Studio before printing, so the layers at the top are much more pronounced than they could have been. Thankfully, I printed this in ABS filament with wall loop set to 10, so it's essentially solid plastic without any infill and I can be as aggressive as I need to with my sanding to make the layer lines disappear. When I was done with the forehead, I could switch to the back, where there's a thin line that was likely caused by a blob of filament being stuck on the nozzle. But before I went any further, I wanted to make sure that it was just superficial. So I took my 80 grit sandpaper again and scuffed the surface, and when I could confirm that it wasn't all the way through the print, I switched to a razor blade and scraped the surface flat. Now this works much like a card scraper does in woodworking. It removes thin layers of material and leaves you with a flat, smooth finish. I continued to sand the rest of the surface until it looked like most of the layer lines were gone. Then I switched over to some 240 grit sandpaper that's foam backed to help me get into all of the contours without leaving any scratch lines from the hard edges of traditional sandpaper. At this point, I could lay down my first coat of automotive filler primer, starting with a dust coat, allowing a minute for the solvents to flash off, and then going back with a heavier coat. I repeated this step twice to ensure I had good coverage, and then I set it aside to dry. After about 30 minutes of dry time, I could get back to sanding, but this time it will be with some extra fine steel wool. The steel wool acts a lot like fine grit sandpaper, but its best feature is just how easily it works on contoured surfaces, and this piece has a bunch. After just a bit of sanding, you can see how it's basically buffing the surface of the helmet, which is great for anything that will be getting a gloss finish. I'm roughly three hours in on my prep work and sanding, and when it looked like I'd sufficiently sanded everything, it was time to paint. But before I start painting, I need to make sure that this droid head is free of dust or anything that would potentially ruin the finish. So I grabbed a tack cloth and gave it a wipe down. Now sadly, this didn't save me from ruining the finish, but more about that in a minute. Since this droid has a metallic finish, I'm going with a gloss black base. Now typically I do this with a matte black and then apply a high gloss clear coat over the top, but I ran out of clear and was in a bit of a time crunch, so I used a gloss black spray paint, hitting it with a dust coat first, giving it a minute or so to tack up, and then applying a heavier coat. And this is where I ruin the finish and all those hours of sanding. I started to notice these tiny bubbles appearing in the finish, which I later learned is called solvent pop. It happens when an outer skin forms on the paint that causes the evaporating solvents to be trapped underneath. Now the day I was painting this piece, it was in the 90s, so it's no surprise that it happened. Of course, I could sand the helmet down again and try to minimize the bubbles, but the following day was going to be even hotter. 
So instead, I decided to move forward, having learned a very valuable lesson in the process. Plus, I was planning on weathering this thing up, so I'll just lean into the imperfections to hide my mistakes. About an hour has passed and the paint was dry but still slightly tacky, which means it's time for my metallic paint. And for this I'm going with my favorite, Alumaluster, which I'll apply using a detailed HVLP spray gun. This paint goes on at low air pressure, somewhere between 15 and 20 psi, and is applied in multiple passes until a consistent finish is achieved, and then can be buffed to a shine. Now with all the issues in the base layer, I'm not too concerned about the buffing, especially after noticing some slumping in the gloss finish that I didn't see until the metallic paint went over it. But again, I'm thinking about this droid riding the dunes of Tatooine in the hull of a sand crawler, so it's not going to be perfect, and it doesn't need to be. And speaking of Tatooine, I'll be using a familiar method to get that dusty, grimy look on this helmet, starting by applying this dark umber paint into all of the recesses and broadly across the entire piece with my airbrush. This color has quickly become my go-to for so many weathering projects since the color is a good balance between rust and grease, plus it dries a lot faster than oil paints. When the umber paint is dry, I'll apply a light coat of hairspray to the entire helmet, and once it's dry, I'll dust the surface with a sky gray acrylic paint to help dull the shine of the metallic as well as the umber paint. This helps to soften the contrast of the two colors, but when it's dry, it can be reactivated with a bit of water and a brush or a rag, and that's how I'll hide all those mistakes from earlier. This method is something I learned from scale model builders and has become a favorite weathering technique for projects like this one, since it doesn't use any harsh solvents to remove layers of paint that could potentially ruin the metallic finish. I'll keep making my way around the droid head, spraying with water, scrubbing lightly with a paintbrush and blotting away with a damp rag until I'm happy with the results. For any areas that need more finesse, I'll grab a cotton swab, dampen it with water, and use it to add some more localized highlights around the helmet. This is also a good way to fix any areas that may not look quite how I'd like. And when I'd made my way around the entire helmet, it was time to call this done. Or at least this part. I want to add vacuum-formed lenses so this can be worn at some point, plus I still need to print the lower neckline. But I ran out of filament, so that's a project for another day. Now while this build had a few challenges, most of them because I didn't know what paints I had on hand, I still think it turned out great and will be an excellent addition to my collection. And if for nothing else, it reminded me that it's okay to lean into the imperfections. I'd like to thank Bamboo Lab for sending me their new H2D printer. It's a great addition to my shop that's going to be getting a lot of use. And if you want to know more about it, I'll leave a link to it in the video description. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But most importantly, go make something. Mm -hmm.